It's another interview. Another winter view. We are going to get a clutch again to interview the lovely band and duel. Like we said, we're doing this series so that we can get more people to know about this place and give these guys a platform the way the newspapers used to do. So let's go on. I'll make you feel unsafe, make you feel unsafe. The greatest fear I had was driving you away, driving you away. I'm not asking you to feel the same, but just had some things I okay. wanted to so, say. Okay, so, yeah, um... All I know is that you're from Lethbridge, and you started very, like, in my opinion, very young. A lot of people don't start around the time that you started producing music, and most of your music is, like, like my humble opinion, a lot of, like, people your age wouldn't listen to that type of music. Where did you, like, get this, all this information for all this music from? Um, I think it started out with, like, the retro station that was back in Lethbridge because it would occasionally play, like, uh, some new wave and uh, synth pop kind of tracks. Just, like, the hits, but it was enough to make me realize that it was something that existed. And then, uh, in some way or another, I stumbled upon uh, other tracks in the genre as well. And then, weirdly enough, the more modern stuff, uh, I actually found it, uh, like, going through playlists of, like, witch house stuff. It would, it would just, like, occasionally throw in a Grimes track or an ABD3 track. So it was, it was kind of like stuff just happened to me in places I was looking. Yes. So, I think I already told you my favorite song is Harsh Winter, and it's obviously because uh, it reminds me of not just that bridge, but <laughs> it reminds me of just Alberta in general, where it has that like, that like, great, I don't know, but one of the things that also reminds me of is professional. Like, I always play it right after like a Depeche Mode song and it just works so I'm guessing you're influenced by Depeche Mode? I am yeah uh, they're probably one of my core influences at this point I was listening to them a lot when uh, the self-titled album came out so like all the tracks where I had to re-record the vocals it would have like the kind of Dave Gaunt, Martin or vibrato to the vocals because I was just like listening to them so much at the time. I think I, re I think I just like remembered something. You was it that you like, like you came onto my stream like a long time ago. You went to music school, right? Yeah. And like that's kind of how you got like your pra uh, not your practice, but like most of your ideas from from music school. And I'm guessing like you said the old retro radio station in Lethbridge, which is pretty cool. Um, well, what did you learn from music school that kind of, like, applies to your music? <laughs> well, well, it was like a, it was like a university degree, so it would have, it was mostly, like, theory and composition and history and things like that. So it was basically just, like, anything that would apply to writing classically. So it would, which... Which also helps with uh, popular music as well because there's a lot of uh, theory and uh, composition and arrangement involved in that as well. So it kind of informed me how to do all that. And also uh, my specific major was in like audio production and things. And that was something I especially needed to learn about because I didn't really know anything about it. So that was probably the most useful thing that I learned. Yeah, like I, I pretty much have been listening to 
2015, I guess, not 2012. I don't know why I thought 2012. I'm honestly to a lot of people since 2012, so I guess I just go to that date automatically. But um, in terms of performing, how did you get like so active on like playing live? I see your name like everywhere. Like you were just in Montreal like yesterday. Yeah. Like and you're just like this person from. Like you're a person from like Lethbridge, and a lot of people, a lot of people have a difficult time just trying to find gigs outside of their own city, especially yeah. when you come from a place like Alberta. Yeah. So how did you get to that? That's like pretty epic. It's just like reckless planning, basically. It's um, I had I had absolutely no reason to book in. Uh, BC or East Canada in 2019, but I did anyway because I just wanted people to find me. And that was how I got the Montreal gig recently was because I played, I went all the way there on a tour back in 2019 and someone found me and was like, hey, I have this show going on uh, pretty soon. Do you want to join in? That, like, Seriously, and not just that, like, you obviously your music holds up, like, it's not just, like, you're touring, oh my god, it's actually, like, you have, like, a solid body of work, and I know, like, some of those were actually singles before, and then it became that whole self-titled album. Yeah. Yeah, so. So, yeah, the, the self-titled was basically, like, a collection of two years worth of stuff I just put out with no real intention of what it was gonna be part of other than like an annual compilation type thing and then I decided to start over like clear out my entire dis discography and start with the self-titled just like start fresh with something I felt would turn out okay just so I had something that people could find a little bit less confusing than a bunch of covers and individual songs just splattered all over the place. Fair enough. No, it, it, it was like a solid body of work. And then I saw you play, I think it was 2018 or 2019 Dickens. Yeah. It would have been, would have been 2019 because it was after the, the album came out. Yeah. And I think that was like, what show was that? It was like you. Dice, it was a dice coming? No. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was the. Uh, it was the Terminus Primer for that year. So there was, uh, there was dice coming. There was Hello Moth. There was, um, there was Glass Apple Bonsai. Yeah, and uh, Strangers as well. All right. Are they? Wait, what? They're done? Yeah, they, uh, they broke up like a... They announced a breakup like a, uh, about a month ago or something. No. Yo, I did not see that. What? Yeah, they're okay, doing other stuff now. I'm a little annoyed. <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was sad to see that. I tried to get them to... I tried to get them to do a show with me in Edmonton post-pandemic and then uh, they told me they were on hiatus. Okay, well, that's news to us and everybody around. There's certain people on my stream who watch, um, who play Strangers and they like love Strangers. That sucks how they broke up. They had like such an amazing sound and honestly, if they just get, oh, like that big, yeah. they, they could have, they could have made it. I mean, not in like the mainstream way, but they could have made it in like the culty way. Yeah. You know yeah, how like they, they easily could have gotten a cult following if they kept going. Like that's like kind of the goal at the end of the day, especially for this compilation, is for people to get a cult following. The only way they can get it is if people believe in them, and that's yeah. if there's like no one that believes. Kind of like, so I try to make sure that like there is like this compilation that represents what's going on in Alberta that a lot of people may not know. So, um, I want to know, I want to know about your latest single. I think we have time 
for future projects in that time. So tell us about your latest single and then tell us about future projects that are coming up and where you're playing after that. Yeah, uh, so the latest single is called You Will Not Love Me Forever. It was released back in uh, early to mid-February. Uh, it, was, it was kind of like the concept behind it was uh, this song about uh, fans being disloyal to you and not paying attention to your stuff anymore. Uh, done in the vein of like a paranoid love song, so it would, so it would sound like it was about a, a relationship that was pretty much in its death throes, which is basically the same thing. And then uh, there was a B-side as well called This Company, which was kind of about uh, basically uh, communicating with someone that you were into, but it was like a long distance thing, so there wasn't anything in person you could do about it. Um, so, actually I asked Ava X, I, I'm not sure if I've seen, I'm not sure if you're a music video person, but do you plan on doing any music videos at all? I, I know Ava does like a ton of music videos, just because her partner is like a freaking film crit cinematic person so she's yeah. got like she's gotten really lucky over that but do you plan on doing music videos um in my opinion i think it's just too expensive for an yeah. artist to do music videos but do you plan on doing music videos in the future or yeah i have footage uh for a lyric video that we shot just before i moved with one of my old roommates uh for you will not love me forever so at some point hopefully that will come out uh He's also got a hut, like a hundred other things going on all the time, so it's not like a big priority uh, on his list. And honestly, it's not for me either because the song's been out for a while now, so it doesn't really matter all that much if it gets done or not. But I definitely hope there's a, there comes a time where uh, music videos are relatively easy to get done on time. Fair enough, yes. And I know there's, obviously there's funding for it, but it's very hard to get funding for it. But in the same boat, I'm trying to find people who can actually get funding and all that stuff. But, um, other than that, um, anything coming up, and drop your socials so that people know all this stuff. And this will be on that side of the thing, so. So I've, uh, I've also got an idea for a second album that I hope to release in 2023. Uh, I'm still in like the very early phases of uh, writing it. Like I, I haven't gotten any full songs down yet, just like bits and pieces of ideas. But uh, now that I don't have to worry about being prepared for shows and everything, I'll probably have a bit more time to work on that soon. And uh, if, if anyone is watching this, find it on, find it on, uh, on Facebook. Uh, I just spend it on Instagram, which is uh, my username is Ty Bennett. Uh, I think I think my Twitter handle is uh, Bennett Music, and then my my TikTok, which I don't use a whole lot. Right? Uh, same as on Instagram, and, and I've also all the streaming services there. Also Bandcamp, so you'll definitely find me somewhere. Sweet, sweet. Thank you so much. And we did it. Oh my god, we got it. Like got 15 minutes. Exactly, on the spot. Oh, okay. Thank you, thank you so much for doing this. Um, later on, you guys will be seeing and in duo perform. Hopefully you guys can see this all. I know like my chat is not moving right now and I'll figure that all all that stuff out later. But hopefully you guys can see this. Thank you so much. This is recorded either way. So if they didn't see it, whatever, we can just put it on later on. It's recorded. Um if you can't see it uh, and you're in the area you should just try uh, drive and take a bus over here. Please, please come here really quickly. That'd be so freaking awesome. Thank you.
bring in your energy. Bring friends, bring everybody, please. Well, either way, we're gonna have a live show, it's gonna be great. Right now, we gotta get Ava X up. So, thank you, everybody. I will be right back with more live music. 